Hi everyone, my name <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Whiting and welcome to my first Q&A video. I'm really nervous and I don't really know entirely why, but we're here, we're doing it. I thought this would be a good little intro, especially for my first YouTube video. And hopefully you can leave this feeling like you know a little bit more about me rather than just what I post on the gram. If you like this and if you're keen to uh, see some more of this mug, um, subscribe, like, leave me a comment, all that jazz. Let's just jump straight into this. Okay, so there are some interesting ones. Good place to start. How old am I? I'm 25, currently going through quarter life crisis. I suppose some other basic stats is as you can probably tell by the voice, I'm an Aussie. G'day, how you going? Have grown up in Canberra, which is the capital of Australia. Not Sydney, not Melbourne, Canberra. I've lived there my whole life um, until February this year, at which time my husband and I, we moved over to New York, which is where I am speaking from right now. Given the current world environment, that has been challenging in its own right, and I was planning on doing a whole separate video on our experience about moving to New York. So I will get that up very soon. So if you are interested in seeing that video, please subscribe and hit the bell or whatever it is. So you get notifications that when that goes live, um, which should be very soon. This leads quite nicely into another question, which was, am I single? And the answer is no, I am not. My husband and I, we have been married for just over three years, but we've actually been together for coming up to 11 years, which is a long time. <laughs> My husband, Pete, is a primary school teacher, elementary school teacher, and he is 28. 28, I'm gonna say 28. We've been together since we were young. We were different high schools, but high school sweethearts nonetheless. So how did uh, Pete and I meet? So um, Pete and I met when I was in year nine and he was in year 11. I was friends with his younger brother. I still am, he's one of my best mates. And so we were friends and he and another friend were having a joint birthday party. So I went over for this party and it was like a Hollywood theme, like Oscars party, which is like super, super cool theme, like for however long. I was 14. So go over to this house and I did not know that my now brother-in-law Ben had an older brother. Pete was helping host the party. So during the course of that party, we got chatting. We both discussed that we both had a mutual love of Harry Potter. After that, we hung out together in like that group of friends. We hung out as a group a few times. And then good old moderation day, um, day of school for the Australian kids. Um, we went to the movies and that was our first time hanging out just the two of us. Scandalous. And after the movie, he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. <sighs> and we've been together ever since. That was August 2009. So <laughs> we very much grew up together. We have done the year 10 formals, the year 12 formals, the awkward photos and weird style phases, bad haircuts and hair choices and just all those cringy stages but it's also been really cool being able to do all those stages with the same person and we talk about that stuff all the time like it's I think it's been so cool being able to share that together and have those shared experiences so anyway I'll stop rambling about that that's Pete and I he's awesome let's 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 keep going do I have soft feet I feel like that's an objective question. I think I do. Bit of a weird flex. I, I, I don't know where this person's coming from. Let's, let's just move along. What's my favorite color? I love black. I love the shade. I do love pink and red. I don't have a particular favorite, I would say, but I always go back. I feel good in black and red. And why? They're power colors. Black, it just goes with everything. <laughs> matches mix and match galore and red it's a power color and being so pale I think the contrast 
hits it out of the park. Do you know Bali? Is Bali a person or are you referring to the place? Pete and I went there on a holiday in January 2019 and we loved it. That was my first tropical holiday. We stayed in a very luxurious resort. It was fantastic. I would love to go back and explore more places. So yes, I have had a little taste of knowing Bali. We'd love to know more. Okay, so dance time. Do you have a background in dance? Yes. So I do post a bit about my dance part of my life on my Instagram and that's primarily I think a lot about what my online stuff is about and where a lot of what I do online comes from. My background in dancing started from when I was a kid. Always been a dancer, always had music around the house growing up so there's lots of those cringy videos of me as a kid jumping around and on the old VHS films so thanks mum and dad for those. Then I started doing ballet when I was I want to say seven and I did that for a little bit and then I stopped that and then changed to netball and did netball for a bit but then one of my friends in primary school was doing tap dancing and that sounded really cool because it wasn't like the traditional ballet thing. From there I just spiraled into all the other dance styles at that dance studio. I was in the performance troupe at that dance school and they did these showgirl routines and the costumes like I just remember feeling I didn't quite know what to like call it back then but it was glamorous and I just, it, the, the confidence of being at like so like poised and like wearing this like costume just dripping in sequins and beads and like it was like I quickly fell in love with it. That's where like this love of the, the glamorous, the show girly like stuff, part of dancing really began. We had a workshop taught and it was in Samba. And I just thought, oh wow, this is so cool. Like it's something so different. So I finished up at that dance studio. I'd finished all my ballet exams. I wanted to try something different that I hadn't tried before. So I remembered that um, Latin workshop that I'd done and found that dance studio. So I would have been like 17, started doing partner salsa classes. From doing salsa, I saw the girls perform in this Brazilian Samba, which they wore these immaculate like bejeweled costumes with the feathers and the rhinestones and the sequins and the beading and I was just like shooketh and I was like I want to do that like the music was so energetic and the way that they would move their hips and just like attack everything they were like so strong and fierce and powerful and like but still so glamorous and they look like they're having a bloody ball um I was like yep yeah sign me up. My first experience learning and performing samba was a parade for the National Multicultural Festival in Canberra and it's a parade that runs through like the streets of Canberra for like an hour. So like I'd done a crash course in learning the basic steps of samba and doing um, uh, you know short choreographies and performed that that's like summer of oh I want to say 2013 little baby samba dancer and I borrowed a costume I'd been doing my own performance makeup since I was a kid so I slapped on my makeup horrific fake tan <laughs> I will say that now I'll try to find a photo because oh my god it was a vibe I performed it and I loved it and I just had to keep going so I kept doing samba and then from samba I added in doing um, Latin shines and I also added in this class called burlesque like it was so like confidence inspiring you felt so sassy and so like powerful doing it and the music was really fun and they often had like cute like Marilyn Monroe like sort of style like music and I'd gotten into the old Hollywood movies sort of in those later years of high school and that's where I found like the the glamorous like pin-up side of things and that's like I fell in love with that so I was like yes sign me up I fell in love with that class too and I think that's where I really took dancing into my own so the samba I will always love because of how fun it is to perform and the utter glamour of the costumes and what it means like to be able to move your body and like where it comes from. That. But yeah, burlesque in terms of self-expression, um, it's so awesome. So I actually started teaching the burlesque class um, in 2016 and that I think was I was able to take my dance into like the next level. It's one thing to be able to pick up steps and follow along in a class, um, but it's a whole nother level to try to teach that to someone else, as well as coming up with the, the moves and the quarry that you want to teach.
it seriously was the highlight of my week teaching that class every week to this amazing group of women i've been performing for oh, since i was a kid but I'm performing professionally at comps and for private shows like weddings and other events um in like samba but also burlesque but mainly mainly samba with the costumes because it's showy and everyone likes that it's my fitness like it's very social and I love being able to go and meet with people and like hang out with my beautiful dance friends because it's nice having that group of dance friends who share the same interest. That's sort of my background in dance. How can a non-talented adult take dance classes or how to start? The thing I would say to that is just to find a class or find a style that resonates with you and just go for it. Do your research, like check out social media and that's what it's great for. Like find a studio or someone who offers classes that you like the sound of and just jump in there and give it a go. Like you, you won't be able to tell like how you're gonna feel about it, like unless you give it a go. And the great thing is, is that so many people offer classes for adults who haven't danced at all. Okay, next question. Would love to know more about your legal background slash career. Yeah, so I am a lawyer by profession, <laughs> believe it or not. So I studied law at um, uni. I have a Bachelor of Law with Honours from the Australian National University. I went straight out of uni into the workforce, so I was very grateful to start work at a Canberra law firm while I was doing my practical legal training, which is what you have to do in Australia in order to be admitted to practice. So I graduated from uni in December 2017. And then I was doing my practical legal training through 2018. Then I was admitted to practice in October 2018. So um, in Australia, I am a fully fledged registered practicing lawyer. <laughs> in terms of background, I've always been very creative, but studious at the same time. I was a massive nerd through school. Pretty high achieving. I say pretty high achieving. You have to, yeah, you have to be pretty pretty clever to get into law school, I suppose. So yeah, I, I did well at school. Oh mate, I, I struggle through uni. Like law school where they put up all the smart kids against all the smart kids. Ooh, that was a shocker. I was in a private practice firm. Um, and what that means is I was doing a bit of everything. So a bit of general practice. So um, I was assisting the associate with commercial and family law matters and litigation contract matters, building disputes, and then I was assisting another one of the lawyers with um, wills and estate matters, injuring power of attorneys, loan agreements, other property um, advice and property matters. So I personally really, really enjoyed doing the estate planning and the um, wills and power of attorneys. I really enjoyed the, the like human contact side of things that wasn't as competitive as um, other types of litigation, especially family law, because originally during uni I thought, oh yeah, family law, like, that's what I want to do. So if there's an area that I could try practicing in, here in America, I would be hoping to try learn more about um, property in America and also the wills and estate planning side of things. It's a really practical thing to have done, like, you should just go get it done, because it just makes it so much easier if you have that stuff in place. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> That's a bit of a, an insight into my legal background and my profession <laughs> by degree and um, what I plan to be doing with that degree very soon. How are you so happy and positive and confident all the time? Teach me how. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. Um, the truth is I'm not. Um, I, I put out a persona online often that I am because I think that's part of this deep down embedded thing that you always want to put out a bit, the best side of you. But the truth is, I mean, especially right now, the last couple of months moving overseas, like that hasn't been a particular, like it's been an exciting time, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily been a very happy and like awesome time, especially <laughs> given what's happened after since moving here. You, know, you need to, to be checking in with yourself and finding out what works for you. Having a positive outlook, I think, is something that you can very much practice at. There's lots of different ways to come to that, and I definitely suggest doing your research, you know, given your individual circumstances. And then in terms of, like, confidence, I think a lot of my confidence I can link actually back to my dancing. So 
for me, dancing was growing up and is for me still very much a awesome way of me to express myself and it makes me feel good. So as well as um, being active and getting my body moving and breaking a sweat and feeling good from that physical side of things, you know, there's good music, there's endorphins pumping, um, you're hanging out with your, you know, your dance friends. Um, so there's, I think there's those benefits that definitely make me feel happy and keeping that like, keeps that sort of positive feedback in my mind. But then in terms of building that confidence, like you're in this very supportive, well for me anyway, I was in this very supportive environment of awesome women um, doing the same thing and all wanting to work on their dancing. That's really helped my confidence over the years as well. And not only that, but like having, <laughs> I know that everyone says this, but seriously having an awesome support network. Like my mum growing up was always like, it doesn't matter so much about what you look like, you know, what's in here, what's in here? Like you are strong and independent regardless of what's going on. You're beautiful regardless of this. Like, so I can really, I think, to like put that back to my family and mum growing up. I think that's definitely made a big impact on who I am today, that it's not just about the physicality, it's being strong emotionally, mentally, like all of that I think is so, so important as well. And that's, again, something that you can, you can work on, you can build on that. You're having that and you're surrounding yourself with awesome people, not limiting it to physical, but also online, especially now. Like, you know, if you're seeing stuff online in your social media feeds that, you know, doesn't make you feel good, isn't, you know, isn't doing you good up here, mute it, unfollow, block. Like, I think curating that space as well really helps build that confidence and building that positivity and that happiness, like, not only in the short term, but long term as well. All right, and this is the last one I'll wrap up on, is why do you feel so passionate about spreading body positivity? This is a really interesting question. I initially thought I was very much body positivity aligned and something that I'm, I'm very much still learning about this space, particularly because it's become such a hot topic and it's so popular right now. The fact of the matter is I've always been a big gal, like, I've always been big and chunky, like I've always been like curvy and and thick. And I, I've been able to feel confident through my dancing in my own little Canberra bubble. But it's only through my platform on social media that I have then been able to, like it sort of exploded and I've then been able to share what I've been doing with my dancing and just me <laughs> being a a chunky girl living my life um, and sharing that with other people who might find that um, helpful to them. Trying to be positive for my own benefit has always been very important and I've always gained a lot of joy from my dancing which I think I've already talked about quite a bit and because I find so much joy in my dancing I think that's helped me out so much in so many facets of my life that's why I feel so I feel so good about sharing it because if I feel good about it like Maybe you guys can feel awesome about it too, like finding out what works for you. Um, and like it's dancy. Like you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to like go learn stuff. Just jump around in your living room. Like do what works for you. And some of like my favorite people that I follow, I found because they posted videos of them like wiggling and shaking and just being themselves in their knickers in their living rooms. And I just saw them and I was like, oh my God, there are other people with bodies like me and they're out there putting their, their bodies out into the, this online space just being themselves and that I think that visibility is really important for like breaking down I think social stigmas as well um, so that's why I like to share my what I'm doing and some of my story and my two cents where I can and where I think that I have um, something like something of worth to add to the conversation and add to the story um, that I have knowledge about or have experience about as I have found it might help someone else and that's what I really hope that people get out of following me and I think where I really want to take what I'm doing in, in the space that I have is more about um, self-confidence and just loving yourself as you are and doing what you want to do and that being absolutely bloody awesome so um, I'm still 
finding out my voice with where I sit in all of that, um, which can be tricky when there, there are so many, like I, I very much feel like I'm, I'm not <laughs> qualified to talk about this stuff because I feel like there are so many other people who are so much more well-versed at what they're doing, but what I do, I hope to just be sharing what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day life. I love you know, being able to, to share that and if people are enjoying what I'm putting out and if they can find that helpful in some way, that's awesome. So I think I will call it quits there. I hope that you um, were able to learn something a little bit more about me. I hope you enjoyed watching this and doing this little Q&A um, with me. Thank you for everyone who sent in questions. If you don't follow me already on Instagram, that's where I chuck a lot of my stuff up. I will link it and do all the things in the description box and so you can go follow me there. Make sure you subscribe if you don't already because I will be sharing just a whole mix of stuff that I thought was more appropriate to share in this longer video format rather than just on Instagram. Thank you for watching if you've gotten this far. I really appreciate people who take the time to <laughs> check out what I'm doing. And the fact that people find me interesting is still really boggling to me. So <laughs> I'm really grateful for that. Hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in my next video.